Thanks, uh, Diabetes India, for inviting me. Chawla. What I'm going to do in the next 15 minutes, I'll finish with it. Thanks, Dr. Area, for not uh, overlapping most of my slides. That is really always a great uh, boon. Cardiac uh, COVID disruption in diabetes care is I'm going to talk in the next 15 minutes. We all know high level of mortality with COVID in uh, recent years, in the last that we have seen. And we also seen that uh, there are a lot of side effects of COVID that we have encountered, most of us have done. Now there is evidence that there is a lot of disruption of care, all medical care, especially those who are suffering from diabetes, lots of disruption. In we have witnessed it, we are all partner to it. We have witnessed it as a relative, we have witnessed this as doctors. So on either side, we have witnessed the disruption of the care. So in next two slides, we'll see what were the disruptions, what the causes, and how can we correct upon them or improve upon them. So we all know diabetes and obesity have been stated. Diabetes is a pro-inflammatory disease, and so is the COVID. Large COVID is a COVID inflammatory disease. That is the reason why most of the catastrophes are. A report from Italy published in 2022 signaled that COVID vaccination only uh, produced a mild immunity in people having diabetes. So this was something very surprising that did really diabetic Patients were more exposed to COVID, they had more severe COVID, or they did not produce the immunogenesis that was required with the help of or probably with the help of infection. And this is something that suggests the neutralizing and the role is here as doctor. With medical uh, focus largely. Uh, posted on COVID-19, we do not use the diabetes care very properly. As a doctor, as doctors, we all saw that we could not test or we could not approach or we could not reach to our patient. So these are few direct uh, impact of uh, COVID-19 on people with diabetes, where most of the studies suggested that many of our patients remained in the hyperglycemic you must have seen lots of patients coming to us in 2023 whose creatinine was practically fine. EGFR was wonderful in 2020, having 10 and still everything was fine. They did not turn up for three years, neither they reached or they test themselves to any other primary care health physician at their local level. Now they come with EGFR of 50, 45. The reason being, we all know that either they have taken lots of over-the-counter medicines or they had no access to the treatment or they had no access to probably the investigation. They did not probably utilize SMBG. So there are so many reasons why they have started deteriorating of the micro and macro. The initial portrayal of COVID-19 is another form of viral pneumonia. That was another reason why the COVID-19 took a toll. Still, COVID-19 is going on, as, as rightly said, and still we are going to have lots of COVID. It's now time for us to realize that COVID-19 patients should be asked to utilize number one, POC, number two, the technology, and number three, they should come out very freely without hesitation. So we all know there was stress hyperglycemia, then there was uh, infection, then there was steroid that produces hyperglycemia, fungal infection. So there were lots of things. Add to it the change in our lifestyle. Most of our patients could not move out for exercise. Many of our patients went on eating in fear. Many of our patients lost appetite in fear. Many of our patients had no access 
to proper food during lockout lockdown and that's the reason they had excessive calories or malnutrition so all these factors ultimately led to hyperglycemia and lots of uh, complications because of diabetes again there are uh, financial burdens that we have seen many of the patients uh, have lost their jobs and once the earning member of the family lost the job there was no access to the enough finances loans were not available there were many other illnesses for which the money was spent and probably lost lot of money many people did not receive salary no bank accounts so there were so much financial constraint add to it the indirect cost what were the indirect cost the indirect cost also included the quarantine that led to the approach to the colleagues approach to the relatives was not there main power was completely lost and then the most important thing was access to medication and invest for example take an uh, can take an example of retinopathy we all know that all our patients should undergo retinopathy every yearly at least if they have got non proliferative in case diabetes but for 3 years we all know and probably had no yes we know there are point of care instruments that are now available and if we encourage our patients to utilize them the further or the future pandemics may be tackled one more better way there were indirect influences all these were direct influences but there were indirect influences where there was disruption in the routine diabetes care patients those who did not have access to even a weighing scale or the glucose sticks they had lots of problem we may think about india don't think that all these things happened only in india in usa to many of your relatives or through our patients came to know that the glucose sticks availability become a huge problem because that was under the uh, mediclaim and therefore many of the patients could not do smbg and ultimately landed up in emergency with a hyperglycemic add to it the policy of usa or the western countries where they had said that until there is documented hypoxia patient cannot be admitted and they have to take the steroids at home so that added fuel to the fire there were lots of hyperglycemia now there are lots of studies that are coming from western countries where they are saying that the hyperglycemia has led to lot of my in micro so challenges to the availability was a, a huge problem in uh, covid we all know that these were the eight parameters that a diabetic patient is supposed to control he can control his weight that pressure instruments may be available from the society but he cannot have access to it very regularly until now after learning from covid we create an a uh, uh, technology or education that patient should have diabetic blood pressure so in the first and second session that blood pressure measurement is even more important for a patient having diabetes than the control of hb1c itself it is easily manageable so there are few things for lipids we can keep smoking status hb1c and more importantly urine for micro so these are small points which were not available with the patients then came the six or eight important points failure to immunize for rest of the things pneumococcal vaccine and influenza vaccine were completely uh, non not done during this uh, pandemic ignorance of the disease how severe covid can be in a patient with diabetes so that education was not imparted because most of the doctors were busy in managing covid even the the test which was available on video was not enough or on whatsapp was not enough to explain the full education to the patients then came the failure to uh, again failure of moving out patients could not have access to exercise 
inability to use the newer technology, as I told, failure to diagnose newly developed diabetes. So we all know already, as it has been said, that no DM been a new entity post COVID. Lots of patients were beta were affected, and most of these patients being asymptomatic, never went in for investigation. Therefore, we had a huge rush of patients developing diabetes three years. That was newly onset. Then the asymptomatic nature of the disease, diabetes itself, was a problem. Most of the family members were occupied with some other thing. Either they were, once the lockdown was over, they were occupied either with the earning of money or they were occupied with some uh, office work or they were occupied with moving around. So there were lots of issues. So even the family members were of not a lot of help. Change in lifestyle, as I already told you, and change in food intake, very importantly. There was not enough sources. The food vendors were not available. Vegetable vendors were not available. Finances were not there. Irregularities in eating, excess of food or inadequate food, and excess. All this produced the problem. All in all, you can summarize with this chart the direct and indirect uh, problems or disruptions. So, what lessons do we learn from this? Remember that most of the time the previous pandemics were limited to certain geography. It was probably the first pandemic which extended across the globe even before somebody could uh, uh, understand. As we all know, it started in China in December, and that's why it was known as 2019-20. Uh, uh, and it suddenly spread all across the world, and world was taken. So number one was a global pandemic which went very rapidly across the world. And number two was all previous pandemics had brief uh, in timing. It was the only endemic that has, uh, pandemic that has gone for practically two years, now it is gradually converting in. So we need to learn that similar pandemic may come in future, and that's why we need to tell our patients, start doing it from today, that they should start learning to use POC, and that would be probably the most important message that we are supposed to hand over to our patient, point of care instruments, whether it is retinopathy, whether it is blood pressure, whether it is SMBG at home, they should start learning to use point of care instruments as much as possible, in addition to the mobile technology that would help them all. So, coming to the last points, pandemic is there, it is getting converted into endemic. However, it has definitely disrupted the care of patients having diabetes and the care that a diabetologist is trying to give to the patient completely. So, in next couple of years, we should be ready for having a huge flow of patients having diabetes and number two, huge flow of patients having complicated diabetes. We should be ready for that. So, I think that's where I will stop for further slides. These are all two uh, studies that have been done and that those studies suggest but it was the absence of SMBG, that was absence of education. Lots of studies are there. So, were there. Some good lessons were also it suggested when the elder people trying to uh, learn the technology. These are the few solutions. One of important solution is trying to provide facilities under as far as possible from cardiologists to the food specialists to the retinologist, can provide everything under one roof. Probably that is going to be very, very helpful to the patients in cases of such pain. Concluding my talk, final word is, uh, this is a major crisis. We are supposed to learn from this major crisis. Pandemics will come, but we should be ready 